<coughs> Following the great Good Shepherd Psalm of Psalm 100 is Psalm 102, and especially verses 26 to 29, which sets forth the eternality of the Messiah. We learn this especially seen through the book of Hebrews. Psalm 102, in background, is a psalm that is dealing with the plight of a sufferer in exile who is praying to live, to be restored, and to be brought back to the land of Judah. He is asking Yahweh to extend his life so that he could see God's ultimate redeeming work. And he uh, wants to be brought back hence to the land of Judah or to the land of Israel with his people. It is in this context that we pick up verse 26. The psalmist goes on to say in 26, Lefanim ha'aretz yisata u'ma'ase yadecha shamayim. You laid the foundation of the earth formally. <clears throat> and then the heavens are the work of your hands. Notice we begin with the phrase Lefanim ha'aretz yasata. Literally before or previously Lefanim uh, ha'aretz, the earth, yasata you laid. Uh, by the way, looking at lefanim, fanim is literally to the front with the plural here and with the lamed. Uh, hence, literally to the front, we could just translate it something like previously or before. Ha'aretz, the earth, notice ha is the definite article, and aretz, and ha, by the way, has the comets underneath it because the olive cannot take a doggish. Normally, as seen many times, the article had a lamet after it, like how, and it assimilated, that is, the lamet, into the next radical or consonant. This cannot happen here, so the lamet simply elided or dropped out, and we have what is called compensatory lengthening then from a pothok to a comets under the olive. Notice also ha'aretz is from eretz. It is in pause here, and so the comets, the pothok is lengthened uh, to, uh, from a segol to a comets under the olive. So previously, you laid the earth, uh, the, you, you, you laid the foundation, uh, which is the earth. Notice yasad means to lay a foundation. It is a cowperfect second masculine singular from yasad. And notice the ta gives it away as a second masculine singular. And then uma ase yadecha shemayim. <clears throat> the work of your hands are the heavens. And, notice the va here, is and, the conjunction. Notice the conjunction u in the vav with the shurik instead of the vav with the shava because of the labial mem. Having these two together, it changes from that to u. And then we have the word ma'ase, which means work. It is a noun, a feminine noun, the work of your hands. And yod means hand, and the tzedu yod has this noun in construct with cha, the segol yod showing it is plural. So what you have here is your segol yod followed by cha showing that it's a plural uh, uh, noun in construct with ha, the work of your hands. Notice the shamayim then, the noun meaning heavens. Hence we have the dual ending and the long comets again, 
uh, because the pathak lengthened to a comet in pause. And so we go back to the second or next to the last syllable. And there is that lengthening then in the, such a context. And that's why we go from uh, a pathak, shamayim, uh, to a comet. Under mayim. Uh, instead of a pathak, we have the comet. So we translate it again. Before you laid, or formally, you laid the earth as a foundation, or you founded the earth. And the work of your hands are the heavens. He is talking here in the context about Yahweh and about the Lord's creative work. He then goes on to drive home the point even further in verse 27. He writes, Hema yovedu ba'ata ta'amod ba'chula ka beged yiblu kalevush ta'chalifem v'yachalofu. That is, as we would translate this verse, they shall perish, but you will stand. And like the garment, they shall wax old as a piece of clothing or as clothing you shall change them and they shall pass away or be changed notice we begin with Hema Yovedu they shall perish Hema is a personal pronoun masculine plural they referring to the heavens they shall perish Yovedu is from the verb avad, to perish. Notice it's a pe aleph verb. It is a cal imperfect third masculine plural from avad. Notice as we look at this verb, we have an o vowel after the yod, that is after the prefix. This is because we have what is called a dissimilation in the historical grammatical process of development of this verb. Probably it was something like uh, Yevedu and the I vowel dissimilated or became different because of the Aleph into an O. And we see this in all of the uh, Pe Aleph verbs, the weak verbs that are Pe Aleph. Notice, they shall perish, speaking of the heavens and the earth, but you will abide or endure. But, notice the vav here <coughs> has the conjunction in the contrastive use of it. But you. Ata is a personal pronoun masculine singular. But you shall stand. And amad is the word to stand or endure. It is the cow imperfect second masculine singular from the root amad. Notice that the ayin, being a guttural, takes a chatef pathak, that is a hurried pathak, and again, the pathak part of that shifts under the tab, the prefix, and that's why we have a pathak instead of a hirik under the tab. You will stand or endure the chula kabeged yivlu. And uh, notice as he goes on, uh, ve here means an, with the con- uh, which is the conjunction. Kul is the the noun all, and it is in construct with am. Uh, all of them, the pronominal suffix third masculine plural. All of them as a garment. Kebeged, the definite article is used here, ka beged, I should say, showing any specific garment or a collective use of the singular referring to all garments. Like the garment, they shall wax old, yivlu. Uh, beged is a noun, masculine singular, followed then by the verb bala, meaning to wax old or wear out. It is a cow imperfect third masculine plural from Bala, uh, notice the final hey 
has elided or dropped out, a uh, yivlu, and that happens in these weak lamed hay verbs. It will often lose that final hay in adding a suffix here. Then we go on, kalebush tachalifem veyachalofu, as clothing, <coughs> you shall uh, change them, and they shall be changed. Notice the ka here, again, is the inseparable preposition followed by levush, meaning cloak or clothing. As any piece of clothing, you will cause them to be changed. Notice halaf means to exchange or change. It is the hifil, uh, imperfect, second masculine singular, Notice what you have here in an A-I vowel pattern. Uh, the pathak under the tav, the hirig yod between the lamed and the, and the fi, uh, gives it away as a hifil stem. So we have here the hifil imperfect, second masculine singular from chalaf to change or exchange. And then we have the suffix, a which is your third masculine plural pronominal suffix. You shall change them, and they shall pass away. Notice vaya alofu is the cow imperfect third masculine plural with a simple vav connective, and they shall pass away. Chalaf here means to pass away or exchange uh, in the previous usage, which means to exchange or change. In other words, what he's really saying is you shall change them and they shall be changed or shall pass away. As we look at this psalm, again, we're looking at the eternality of Yahweh with this whole world as being like a garment that is soon exchanged and passes away. But the Lord remains. Then as we come, and we're going to see shortly how this will be applied uh, the, this text to Jesus. But as we come to verse 28, it reads, V'atahu u'shenotecha lo yitamu. But you are. You are the same. And your years will never come to an end. Notice, V'atahu. Literally, you are him. But we would translate it the same here. The vav here with the shiva is a conjunction. Ata is a personal pronoun, second masculine singular. And who is a pronominal uh, pronoun, third masculine singular. You could just translate it like, you are literally he, but it would mean you are the same. You are he who remains, would be the idea here. And then he goes on, Ushinatecha lo yitamu. The u here is a conjunction. Again, notice it is shuri. Uh, ve she, the two shabas changing to a shuri, historically. Shana is the word for year, and this has a plural feminine ending, ot. And it is in construct with ha, a masculine pronominal suffix, second person singular. And your years will not come to an end, or will not end. Lo is a negative particle, and tam, uh, tamam means to end, or to be completed. Notice here, it is, it is a nifout stem, with the ia vowel pattern, the root is tamam. Notice what we have here is a doubling of the uh, tav because the noon, the doggish forte is there because the noon of the imperfect nifal has assimilated and assimilated in this double ayin verb, tamam. And then we have, instead <coughs> of having the double mem, one of the mims has a reverse assimilation that has gone back to the second mim, and hence 
we have a doggy's forte showing that. So your years will be endless. They shall be without end, is the idea. After looking at the eternality of Yahweh then, he then concludes in the next verse as follows, B'nai Avadecha Yishkonu V'zaram Lefanecha Yekon That is, the children of your servants will dwell, or the sons of your servants will dwell continually their seed before you will be established. Notice, B'nai Abadecha Yishkonu. The first two words are two nouns in construct. The sons or children of your servants. Notice the pronominal suffix, second masculine singular, attached to the plural noun, uh, Abadecha. And this is followed then by, uh, it's by the way, it's from Evad, meaning servant. This is followed then by the verb, Yishkonu, which is a cow imperfect, third masculine plural from Shachan, that is, to dwell. So the children of your servants will dwell continually. Bezaram lefanecha yikon. And notice in that phrase, and their seed before you will be established. Notice uh, the ve here again is simply the conjunction in, followed by the noun for seed, uh, zaram, in construct here from the from the noun zera, meaning seed. And so it's followed by a third masculine plural pronominal suffix. So, and their seed before you, lefanecha, has the preposition lamed, with the noun, uh, or is the preposition, uh, with the noun, uh, uh, actually, the lamed here is the preposition before the noun, panecha, face, literally, to the face. But this is commonly translated before. Uh, that is, lefane, meaning before. And notice, we have here the pronominal suffix, before your face or before you. And yakon is a nifal, the verb that follows, is a nifal imperfect from kun, a middle weak verb. Notice the I uh, vowel plus the dogish in the kaf, showing that the noon of the nifal has assimilated. So yin kon became yikon with the middle week, uh, kavan, that historically might have been there, becoming uh, kun, the vav then becoming an o, yikon. Uh, so their seed before you will be established. So as we look at this whole passage, it is exciting to realize that this particular verse is quoted in the book of Hebrews. The verses that are quoted begin, uh, or this whole passage, begin in verse 26 and go down to verse 28. As we look at the book of Hebrews, all these words are applied, so to speak, directly over the board to Jesus Christ. And they are applied, as they are applied from Psalm 45. What the writer of Hebrews is teaching by the pen of divine inspiration is that Jesus Christ is not only the divine king but he is also the divine creator he shares the title of Yahweh he is equal to Yahweh he is fully divine as the one who is eternal he is the eternal creator these two texts are put together in Hebrews chapter 1. That is, Psalm 40 with, uh, or Psalm 45 with this text, verses 8 to 12 of Psalm 40 and this text to show that Jesus Christ, the Son 
is the eternal King Creator. Where angels, in verse 7, as we are looking at the book of Hebrews chapter 1, are simply part of God's creation. In Hebrews 1.7, he quotes Psalm 104, the one who makes his angels winds and his messengers a flame of fire, like lightning. Angels are part of God's creation, but Jesus is the eternal creator, totally equal in deity with God the Father. These great verses are clearly messianic as applied by the writer of Hebrews to Jesus Christ, who is the eternal King Creator, who now reigns forever at the Father's right hand. May we adore Him as our King and as our Creator and spend our days in adoration and worship of Jesus Christ, our King and our Creator.